is not fornication. You see? From the moment uh, she accepts you, you're married. We become binding. Consequently, for the rest of your life, you are tied to a person uh, that I only had a one night stand with when I was 15, 16, 18. And I'm trying to find out why every time I see somebody that look like her, I'm affected. You, you trying to find out uh, why you got pregnant over one night and it's not even a baby because uh, he whole grown now. And you're uh, 40, 55, still trying to connect uh, to the hurt from a man that you had a one night stand with. Don't even know you got a baby. We, we uh, project and picture uh, that hurt and that pain to something personal and it's not. Uh, although it is because it's spiritual connection, but he didn't know. So now I'm affected because she walked away and won't return my phone calls, but I connected with her. You got to turn that thing around, boy. Friend in me, you got a friend in me. Get you down, upside down. A friend in me. Good morning, everybody. Oh man, today is Wednesday. I am excited about it being Wednesday. It is going to be an amazing day. Today we're going to focus on wisdom in the word on Wednesday. Today is going to be a manifesting Wednesday. Today is that God, I believe, is on our side on today. It is going to be an amazing day projection-wise, I think affection-wise. And listen to me, today is going to be an amazing day for miracles, not on Monday, on today, on Wednesday. I know it. there's a word from God on today. I believe it's going to bless your life. And I promise you, if you just stick with me, we're going to work this thing out, man. Listen, I need to talk to somebody in the room on today about soul tie connections. Soul tie connections. I know they hit you a little bit differently today on this Wednesday, but this is going to be a wise word of wisdom to anybody that receive it, man, I tell you, I'm looking in the Bible and I'm going over the, um, I'm going over trying to find out a verse that a match for the context of the, um, context of the content in which I want to deliver on today. And, uh, God brings to my memory the story of Adam and Eve. We just focused on that maybe a few weeks ago. We stood maybe about a month and a half in the book of Genesis. But it is, I think, that God would pull me, uh, to the story of Jesus, uh, in the crucifix that way leading me back right here to Genesis again is that I find in here where we're talking about to Simon Peter, um, uh, where it is that uh, he is telling Jesus, uh, man, I'll, I'll follow you wherever it is that you go. And Jesus says to him, listen, uh, before the night ends, you're going to deny me three times, man. Is that uh, every time uh, you're confronted uh, with, do you love me? Do you know me? Uh, are you affectionate? Are you involved? Uh, it is that you deny me to people, but to my face, you say, God, I love you. Uh, he said, if you love me, uh, feed my sheep. Uh, he said, Simon, do you, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you, you know I love you. Uh, feed my sheep. Uh, he asked him for the last time, Simon, Simon, do you, do you love me, Peter? Uh, he says, uh, Lord, I, I don't understand the line in a questioning here. Like, what is it that you're trying to get me to say that I'm not saying right? Uh, he says, Lord, you know, you know I love you. He says, feed feed my lamb. If you, if you love me, feed them. Is that there is a food that is being produced here that it is that I want you uh, through love to display in action. Because love is not just something that you regurgitate. It's not just something that you uh, say. Love is not just the words that we repeat back to each other. Love is action. Love is action. If you have a notepad, I want you to write that down on today. We're going to put it on the screen. Note number one, uh, love, love performs. Love is action. Love performs. Is that the, the performance of love is not in the speaking it. The performance of love is in the revealing it. 
Now, if you love me, uh, then it is that you would show it by the way that you treat me, uh, by the way that you act around me, by the way you talk to me. Uh, love is not just something I project. Love is something, my God, I protect. Love protects. My God. If I then am in a relationship, a friendship, uh, a valuable uh, union where it is that you feel some kind of way because you love me, uh, you become protective of me. Uh, love, uh, consequently, is jealous. Uh, love is jealous. For the Bible says that uh, I am the Lord. Uh, I have uh, created everything. I am a jealous God. I would that you have no other God but me. Uh, worship no other God but me. Adhere to no other God but me. I am a jealous God. I visit the iniquities of the children that are produced, created, coming from me. I think God would be intentional here about how it is that he plans to be inserted and uh, in serious in your life. Is that he wants you to serve only him, uh, not only because he's jealous, but because he first loved you. Is that jealousy is not a reason for love, but it is an attribute, a contribution from love. Oh, somebody, somebody help me on today. Is that we don't get uh, into a relationship uh, because I'm jealous that somebody else wants you. No, no, no. We get into a relationship, a friendship, a binding mutual uh, coupleship, uh, be it uh, friends, be it uh, brother, uh, sister, beyond uh, what it is as blood. Because now I'm connecting to you on a personal when I don't have to be connected to you. It's not because I'm jealous somebody else is going to take my brotherly spot. Not, not because I'm jealous somebody else is going to potentially be your wife. Uh, I am in love with you. Uh, therefore, uh, because the love is pure. The jealousy uh, comes from a pure place. Is that I am uh, pure in intent right here because I know that I love you so much that I don't want anybody else taking uh, you for granted. That's that's the act of jealous love. Is that I don't want anybody taking you for granted. So it is that I would put myself in position where I then move differently because of the love that I would project onto you. And so I believe that a lot of us put ourselves in positional, uh, tra transitional spaces where it is that the love that I receive is the love that I give. You watch this now. In the Bible, it says uh, John chapter uh, three. It says, uh, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave. Uh, love, love, gives it it gives of itself uh, god would give himself to protect to lead the world into a a general better direction for where it is that he would have for us to go on today is that i believe that love giving is love giving unselfishly is that unbindingly unconnectively unprejudicedly i love you so i'll give everything in me uh not to please you but to make sure you end up in a loving supportive place is that when i love you uh, I not only protect you, I not only action uh, why I show you uh, that I love you, but now I give of myself. Consequently, most of you, uh, if you have children, would know that uh, a parent loves uh, unconditionally uh, their baby. Is that it is it does not matter what my child does i'm always gonna be in my corner in the corner uh for the child is that you can uh be bad get bad grades you can have bad behavior i may discipline uh but i'll love you to the point where i'll give you everything i have to make sure you're okay because really a lot of us in our kids to private school not because uh, we're so ditty and stuck up but it is because we love them enough to sacrifice comfortability uh, so that my child can have profitability in life love gives if it is that somebody is telling you I love you and there is no action to give uh, behind that uh, it is a tainted love I'm not saying it's not love I'm saying this love is tainted this love is motive this love if it only receives if love is only receiving then this is not pure love it is a form of love. It is not pure love. It is not whole love. So when it is that we get to Genesis chapter 3, we find here what we depict to be the fall of man. 
But I think there's something deeper here in the story because it is we find Adam speaking to his wife. Is that God would lay him to rest for a second and then do uh, autonomy surgery on Adam to uh, recreate uh, from him a woman that's a uh, that's caused to be weaker than him, not be in statue, not in strength, uh, because in reality, because she takes a part from him and then God uses that and makes a, an entire woman plus his part. She's now stronger than him, but she's weaker than him because she came after him, created from him. So there is uh, physically, um, spiritually, uh, emotionally um, embodiment, a part of him physically attached to the person that she is. Now this speaks to what a soul tie really is, is that anything that I'm inserting from me inside of you then connects us uh, because it is uh, before uh, Adam becomes a living, breathing soul in chapter two, it is that God had to breathe the breath of the soul in him is that we have animation to this body clay uh, because of the soul that God puts inside of our bodies. So if it is that if we've already existed, listen, read this now, in chapter one, where there's God uh, created man and female. Uh, I'm sorry, God created us man, male and female in his image. Uh, is that it's not until the backstory that God gets down in the dirt and forms a body come on now, that would enclose to be the mechanical, uh, naturally seen performance of the love of God's breath. Did you catch that? He said, he said you are just like God in spirit form. But he said, I'm going to put you in a body so that you can see each other. Uh, and so absent the body becomes present with the Lord uh, because you cannot kill what is God's. If if the breath, if the soul belongs to the Lord, uh, then we, uh, being in spirit, uh, that's why it's required that we worship God in spirit and in truth. Is that the truth of the matter is, is that this is but temporary. Is that this is going to have to be let go. This is going to have to be dropped and or changed uh, because we cannot leave this world of sin and enter into a life of purity into this. With this, it says, uh, not even a speck of sin will be able to enter into heaven. Is that we are subjected to leaving this prison body of sin behind. When it is that I'm leaving this, I then make my transition over into the spiritual uh, because God is a spirit. Uh, Jesus, uh, in corporately going back to heaven, uh, becomes translucent in the uh, trans transition back to heaven, becomes a spirit. Uh, the enemy, the adversary over your life sends attacks in spiritual form is that when it is that you're fighting, uh, we, we equate those fighting, those draining moments in the natural to how it is I've been fighting in the spiritual is that for we fight not against flesh and blood. This is spiritual warfare. This is principalities in high places. This is something you cannot see, but my God, you have to faith it until you make it. Listen to me. If I am a spirit and you our spirit when we connect it is not only flesh that's connecting thereby if my love is tainted and your love is pure and our spirits are connecting you have then corrupted the body of Christ listen to me how is it that I can have a one night stand with a random female and carry her for the next five years obsessed that she won't write me back. How is it that you can get impregnated from a dude that you knew for three days and then you be connected for the next 50 years? Is that I still feel some kind of way? I'm, I'm still harboring uh, ill will, ill feelings. Is that I'm not really sure how I should feel about the sexual connection when it is that you don't want an emotional connection, when it is I'm all wrapped up, my God, in the natural and physical connection of what we did last night. Listen to me. That God said, for this purpose shall a man leave his mother and his father and be joined together with his wife 
and they become one being. Is that this is not uh, autonomizing the, uh, the relationship uh, to be like hypothetical. Is that this is pushing you into a purposeful place where it is that you can see and understand that this is spiritual. Is that you don't never see uh, anywhere in the Old Testament, uh, in the newer chapters, I'm sorry, in the uh, beginning chapters where it is that a man or a female are getting married. There is no ceremony. My God, sorry. There is no ceremony in the process. Ooh, the sun came in bright today. There is no ceremony here in the process. Okay, there we go. There we go. Bless you. Bless your life. Listen, God is shining in on you even right now. Whatever it is that you're going through, I tell you, the sun is about to come. Listen, is that this marriage is, is spiritual. Is that it is that when I insert myself in a place where I was not created, I was not motioned, uh, the connection here is binding. This is why you have to watch uh, connections and who you allow lay hands on you in this season. Because people uh, may be coming uh, seeming uh, good intent, but have ill will behind them. When they make physical connection, they not only connect with you in the natural, they connect with you in the spirit. So a soul tie uh, is somebody, listen to me, don't get this wrong now. A soul tie is somebody you become married to. In the forming of the words and the forming of the meaning, marriage is not by certificate. Marriage is not only uh, by the binding of two people. Listen to me. It is uh, through legal terms. Through legal terms, getting married means I have to consummate the marriage. What is what is consummation? Don't nobody know. I appreciate you asking that so that I can explain to you what it is consummation is. Is that the marriage is not legal. It's not binding. There are no rights, no rewards, no connection in the natural of the law, in the spiritual of the law until I connect with you. I have to consummate it. I have to perform in it. I have to show you. So we're going back to love here. Love is action. My action is that I love you. So I want to perform intercourse with you. I, I want to I want to be a part of you. I want to connect with you more than just natural and spiritual. I want to combine what you have with what I can give. Um, this is where a man and a woman uh, become intertwined here because you can now accept something that I'm trying to give. All right. Um, I wanted to talk about that for a second, but I'm going to move on. God is not moving me in that direction on today. However, I will drop this to say that you have to be careful how a person is trying to connect with you. Is that uh, God would make in creation uh, the way uh, that the connection needs to be made. But through the world of influence and sin that the devil would motive you uh, to try and uh, force something that's not meant to be. Uh, but God says if, if, if it flows, if it fits, oh my God, then, then that is the connection of the power of God. If, if it does not fit, uh, that is the rejection becoming the... Um, becoming the contortion of the will of God. I then am forcing something uh, to you, uh, to God, that corrupts my spirit, and my spirit is pure. It's my body that's in sin. So every time that you uh, commit uh, fornication, it's not fornication. Is that um, from the moment I I insert myself from the from the moment uh, she accepts you, you're married. We become binding. Consequently, for the rest of your life, you are tied to a person uh, that I only had a one night stand with when I was 15, 16, 18. And I'm trying to find out why every time I see somebody that look like her, I'm affected. You, you trying to find out uh, why you got pregnant over one night and it's not even a baby because uh, he whole grown now and you're uh, 40, 55, still trying to connect uh, to the hurt from a man that you had a one night stand with, don't even know you got a baby. 
we we uh, project and picture uh, that hurt and that pain to something personal and it's not. Uh, although it is because it's spiritual connection, but he didn't know. So now I'm affected because she walked away and won't return my phone calls, but I connected with her. How can sex be that powerful? How can intercourse bind somebody so powerfully? And then God brings me back here to Genesis to tell somebody on tonight, listen, is that by the way that you're looking at it, you believe this is just human connection. And to an extent it is because you are a spiritual being. But God told me on this morning, he said, look at what you're made of. That I'm sperm and egg, bone and malleable tissue. He said, no, 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 look deeper than that. Said, what, what, what are you talking about? He said, you are the dirt of the ground. So out of the dirt, I created you and told you to reproduce, to be fruitful and multiply. So that every time that man performs in you, every, every time that girl opens to you, it is as the farmer planting a seed. And that seed takes root because the purpose of intercourse is to reproduce. The purpose of intercourse is to reproduce. The purpose of intercourse is to reproduce. We didn't taint it because I am sided in how I feel good. And I'm not trying to grow a seed. Therefore, I didn't plant something that never grows to be a baby, but it grows into deceit. It, it grows into malice. It, it grows into hatred and revenge. It grows into a grudge. As we're walking around as flower pots, not understanding the gravity of how it is that God would have positioned us in this season to be soil. That's why you are soul. And it's through the soil that we plant those seeds, intentionally or unintended, is that it is something is growing inside of you. So we get to 25 and 26 and we've had seven sexual partners. And I'm trying to find out why it is I have trust issues with the new man that I ain't never met, who, who ain't never broke my heart, who ain't never made me cry. I'm trying to find out why I'm treating uh, the girl bad who does me good because I've been connected to four girls who cheated on me while we were intimate. Is that it is that you've allowed something to grow out of you that was supposed to be a flower, supposed to be a rose, but rather I'm growing thorns because the intent wasn't pure. I then get older in life and I get married now through the courthouse. We, we have a big wedding. We are seemingly happy couple until it is that real issues start coming out because I'm trying to plant over a seed I had no idea was there. That's good on today. That's good for somebody. It makes it practical. It makes it tangible for you. Is that now you can see it. Is that we are a whole flower pot growing years of oak trees. Not even seeing them because they're, they're invisible to us. Because we are ignorant to the fact of what it is that I am a flower pot. That I am but soil in this soul. I am but a seed giver or a seed receiver is that my mission is to reproduce giving fruit. We then try and heal people that we don't even know are broken. We love people that have no space for us in their life. And we're trying to find out if I'm good to you, why are you bad to me? Because I come undamaged. I come virgin. I I come untainted and you've had two sexual partners and an ex you can't stop texting. You, you, you have performed sex one time in your life and now this guy becomes your soulmate. Where you become obsessed and can't leave him alone. Uh, she is um, all intensive purposes obsessed and can't leave him alone. It is the reason because there is 
a plant growing that was maybe once a vine, once a flower, once a thorn that now has formed into a whole oak tree. And I come as a good man speaking to the woman that I need you to be wife, mother, first lady, CEO, vice president. I need you to be my ambassador. I need, I need you to be my forerunner. I need, I need you to be my televangelist. I, I, and you can't perform like that because you are a flower pot carrying an oak tree. Therefore, you become overloaded and then break. You break the clay that is my heart because you have no room because you've been already implanted on and I didn't know it so we don't look at things in the spiritual because it is that we're natural but God says I want you not be ignorant concerning these things that my people perish for the lack of knowledge know that these connections are deeper than just a penis going inside these things are just are more connective than just you putting your mouth on somebody you 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 taking somebody inside of you. You you going deep. It, 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 it's, it's, it's deeper than just the physical. It's deeper than just the physical aesthetics of sex. Is that they're giving you impartation. Thereby, if they're leaving body parts behind, why are you carrying around dude arm but you connected to my foot? Hmm. Is that... I'm being dragged alone, passed alone in six, seven, eight, nine, ten different directions because there's, there's other people holding on to me because their spirit man is connected to mine because I've let them in me. I've, I've, I've given myself to them. I've, I've then left a part of me here and yet I'm trying to go across the street. So I'm then pulled in two, three, four different directions. Consequently, uh, the women that I am connected to now uh, begin to hate each other or begin to love each other with a mutual hate for me. Did you catch that? Is that they are connected through my spirit, even though I've gone on away. Now they can come together and love each other and hate me for the mutuality that is my spirit brings them together. Or uh, they can be torn apart, hating each other and then spewing that at each other but loving me at the same time knowing I'm seeing both of them but it's now that they're connected through me I think God would be intentional here about how it is that he says shall a man leave his mother and his father and be joined to his wife and they become one you have but room to grow one tree one seed that's why you work your own garden that's by the sweat of your brow Will you work the field all the days of your life is that you would be submissive to her as she submissive to you as you submit to the will of God that we have no room for error here we have no room for personal interpretation here we have no room to veer away here is that I need not be holding your hand and you got a whole nother Negro attached to you soul ties can be cut but it's not until the confession happens to say, God, I was living outside your will. Therefore, I then became a farmer of something I didn't even know I was growing corn. <laughs> God says, here's what I'm doing for you in this season of your life. I'll come in as the shepherd. And what it is that I'll start farming on you. I'll start changing you. I'll start lifting the burden off of you because I want to help you, save you, and protect you. I'll cut the tree down. But when I uproot it, listen to me, do not water the root. Those things that you water, those, those things that you spend time with, those things you invest love in, they live. If you want it to die, God said he'll kill it today if you but give him your water, give him your soil, give him your plow, give him everything that it is inside of you that would be rejective to allow God to work through you because it is you wanna be your own farmer. Just give me your land and I'll plant you good seed. 
God is positioning you into a purposeful place on today that it is that you can receive everything that's coming from him is that your seed is important your seed is destined your seed is greater than what it is that I just believe to be a five six four minute interaction be intentional about the connections that you make they're not only natural these are spiritual connections. You are but a flower pot accepting seed. Watch how it is that you're growing in this season. Listen, I love you. I pray this has been beneficial to you. I pray that you can share this with somebody and be enlightenment to their life. I push you into the position of producing good seed in this season. That we watch our connections. I love you. God loves you more importantly. Love on yourself. Encourage yourself. You love you.